would a six, if a six week ban theoretically came to your desk, would you sign it? But why, why I will answer that when you answer, when you ask Kamala and Biden if they would agree to 37 weeks, 38 weeks, 39 weeks, then I'll answer your question. How do you define woke? There's a lot of things. I mean, you want to start with biological boys playing in girls sports. That's one thing. The fact that we have gender pronoun classes in the military now. I mean, all of these things that are pushing what a small minority want on the majority of Americans, it's too much. She's just going to walk herself off that stage at that rate. Joining me now, Tara Setmeyer, senior advisor to the Lincoln Project and former comms director for the GOP, Tara. Just because Nikki Haley seems like the least extreme, although that uh, tape would prove otherwise, right, the least extreme of her opponents, it doesn't mean that she's good for America. So let's go through something really quickly before I get to you. Abortion. She's strongly pro-life. She's supportive of states being able to do a ban. She wants to criminalize abortions, and she'll sign a nationwide ban if she's in the Oval. Grocery Climate. Prices. She's acknowledged— Seven She's acknowledged climate change is real, but she'll reverse Biden's climate protections, including withdrawing from the Paris Agreement and eliminating subsidies for renewable energy. She doesn't support financial aid to Ukraine. For immigration, she's going to start catch and deport, and she wants to limit birthright citizenship. With Trump, she's inclined to pardon him, and she supports an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. She says transgender rights are a threat to women, that sex is binary, and she bans the use of public funds for transition care, and she calls herself a union buster. Tara. She does not seem like she's a better option for America in any way. Well, it's clear that Nikki Haley's trying to be everything to everyone all at once, right? She takes both sides of every position uh, for Republicans. This is not a, a general election strategy for the most part. She has to get through the primary first. Uh, some of her positions, she's trying to make herself more palatable to a national audience the way she spoke about abortion, um, to make it seem as though, well, we don't have enough votes in the Senate, and as women, we need to, you, you know, we shouldn't punish women for, you know. She tries to, to put in there some moderating language. But you went through the list of issues here, and she's very conservative mm -hmm. on most of them, more conservative than the majority of the country. Is she better than Donald Trump? Well, yeah. I mean, almost anyone is better than Donald Trump. My cat Tiki would be better than Donald Trump. The guy's an authoritarian dictator wannabe who wants to tear up our Constitution. So um, that's a very low bar to say, is she better than Trump? But you have to get past the Republican primary first. And a lot of us who thought that Nikki Haley—I mean, I was a Republican for 27 years, and she was an up-and-comer, and she was someone that we looked to and said, okay, she's got potential for a larger office. We like what she did in South Carolina, standing up to the racists, taking down the, the flag of treason, as we call it at the Lincoln Project, the Confederate flag. Those were bold moves in South Carolina. But then when it politically was advantageous to her in her mind, she completely took the other side when she needed to, a.k.a becoming Donald Trump's U.N. ambassador. So you can't trust her. Will the real Nikki Haley please stand up? I don't think we really know who that is. Does she? And to your point, I'm glad that you brought it up, Tara, because Haley initially actually endorsed Marco Rubio. Mark, Lil Marco. I was there. In 2016. I was there okay. in South Carolina and she at the told primary when she did that. And she told Marco Rubio, I'm going to do whatever it takes to help you beat Donald Trump, including publicly berating Trump. But when Rubio lost, she then supported Ted Cruz. We can't account for taste, right? Then she votes for Trump, <laughs> joining his administration, even after he publicly bullied her. There's a Democratic strategist in South Carolina who said, quote, she, as a Nikki Haley, will adapt to whatever benefits her to whoever she's around. So isn't that Tara, to your point, just a nice way of saying that she's two-faced and she'll do and say what it takes to get people to like her? Absolutely. Uh, we've seen this. She's done it time and time again. She tries to package it a little bit nicer. Uh, her strategists are trying to, they know that this is an issue, so they're trying to turn this around now and use it as uh, a badge of valor. Well, she knows how to work both sides. That means that she's able to look at both sides of an issue and come to, uh, you know, a good bipartisan agreement or, you know, find middle ground. Nice try. But we all see and hear what Nikki Haley has said and done. Let's not forget that she also raised her hand and said that she would support Donald Trump if he were the nominee and that she would pa pardon him. So which is it? This is a time for choosing. We're not talking about both sides of how you feel about marginal tax rates or health care policy. We're talking about whether you're supporting someone who wants to destroy our Constitution and destroy our democratic republic. That's what we're talking about here. These are very serious issues. There is no both sides of authoritarianism here that you can take. 
which she is she's trying to do here, playing both sides in order to get through the primary. So, you know, for Nikki Haley, it is a time for choosing. You need to choose whether it's America and our democracy, or you're going to continue to bow to Trumpism, which will destroy us. You can't have it both ways. And that's the most frustrating part about her. Playing both sides of this is partially normalizing what Donald Trump has done to this country and to the Republican and to the Republican Party. And it's people like her, the enablers like her, that have allowed us to get to this point in the first place. So I we as Americans, we should reject that. You either take a position against authoritarianism and pro-democracy, or you're unqualified to hold the highest office in the land, full stop.